Okay. Gary, say hi. Uh, How are you okay, doing? Uh, it's Gary the K. I'm, uh, today is Christmas. Now, I made some of the videos already, so many of our little website people, they're kind of following. Are you on there, too? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm on there right now. Well, it's interesting. Today, being it's Christmas, most of the places I meet, a lot of the guys, like White Castle, it's closed. So I'm at the Boulevard Diner, right where I grew up. I, I grew up right down the street, Smith Avenue, 91st. So as I'm I'm sitting here on the computer, and I'm thinking, oh, I won't run into any of my friends today. <laughs> Marie, I've never met Marie. She does not, she's camera shy, okay? I never met Marie, but Gary, who you just saw, is a friend of mine. And every time I come up, I run into Gary. And he's told me about Marie. And <laughs> she does not live in the Northeast, but she's a friend of Gary. And so she'll come every now and then. Sure enough, I met Marie yesterday. <laughs> And so she walks into the diner, and she says, Gary's on the way. I said, oh, this will be my chance to, for everyone, to, for me to get Gary on camera. We're having quite an, Marie asked me, and those of you that follow the site know I do politics, I do everything. But I'm very open, you know, I'm not like going to shove it down people's throat. So Marie had a lot of questions about, what do you think about Trump? What do you think about uh, Islam? What's going on in the world? You all know my view, but she has not, so I tried to give somewhat of a balanced view of a lot of things, some economics. She's a big fan of various uh, Deepak Chopra, whom I, I'm familiar with. And I said, I think Deepak Chopra, if he was on a panel with me, I said, I'm the type of Christian or teacher that he would get along with. Because I've even taught, well, you know, in the catechism, it says there are streams of light that we can receive from the other religions that are good. Streams stream. of light? Yes, that we can get truth. I, I might be not quoting it exactly what right. But uh, that saying, what you try to do, in my view, Are people know. Oh, yes, forget it. Okay, thank you. All right. Merry what, Christmas. What you try to do is, when I, when I have Muslim friends, I have uh, Eastern religion friends, various Christians, what I try to do is instead of approaching them and saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. What I try to do is say, there's truth that we can we can glean from the various groups, not meaning we totally compromise a belief. Like Marie asked me, she said... Aren't they all prophets to God? Well, here's, the, here's, where, here's where in Christianity, it's hard for me to teach it all right now. Marie asked me, said, John, do you know, like some of the friends you, you have are Jewish? I said, oh, that's completely fine, I said, because I teach, you know, the Old Testament, which is Judaism, the Torah. I said, I've worked with everybody. What we try to do, what I try to do in my view of it is, I can, I've quoted Confucius before. I put a quote like from him down. Okay? I, I've Not meaning I completely agree with every aspect of every religion, but what I try to do is take a moderate approach in the sense that if we're going to live in a society where we work with each other, we have to not demonize the other side. Right. And it's very difficult, if what's going on in the world today, with, with radical Islam, if my view is we don't want to brand all Muslims with the anti-Muslim radical view because right, that would not be proper. Right, to God, that's what I'm saying. Now, in the Christian view, which some criticize Christianity because they say it's exclusive, okay? Meaning it's excluding the other ones because Jesus would say things like, so you're going to get me preaching too much. Jesus would say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Okay. What about my Jewish friends who do not embrace Christ historically as the Messiah? Does that mean that my friendship with the Jewish person has to now be cut off because the Christian view, which is accused of being exclusive, meaning the only way to the Father is to the Son, that does not mean if I hold that view, I hold that view, it's a Christian view, it does not mean that my Jewish brothers or even, in a, even Muslim friends, it does not mean that I have to immediately cut those people no, off. No, not you. What about them? Yeah. There, there's all, that's an asking 
all these people all passed away. Okay. This is this is the other view that you could take, which would be a more moderate Christian view. Do all paths lead to God? Not necessarily, but is is God there's a verse in the New Testament where Jesus says the rain and the blessings and even the bad things, but they come on the just and the unjust. Okay. God in in the more modern Christian view, God can reveal himself to all people groups, even the ones who do not hold the exclusive Christian position. That's the more moderate view. Now that wouldn't mean all paths go to God in the Christian view, but it would mean that God is revealing himself or man showing himself to many groups. So that's a more moderate view. The, the, when, you, when the critics of Christianity say Christianity is exclusive, meaning it excludes other groups, most groups in a way any world view that's truly held to is normally an exclusive view. Meaning this, I'm doing too much teaching on this. Some who teach in the field of philosophy, which Marie said she likes philosophy and I told her I teach it. Some teach, there was a famous, okay, yesterday I was talking to Danny, let me use this. And Danny got into Einstein. Dan, Gary knows Danny. Yeah, yeah, he does. Okay, Quite Dan, well. Yes. <laughs> Quite well. He's, That's, he's a very unique individual. I like it. I, a very unique. Danny brought up Einstein, and I'm a good friend of Danny. Danny brought up Einstein. Because he thinks he is Einstein. No, but he yes, knows he, I, he knows he I teach some of this. But he knows, he feels like he's Einstein, Danny. So what I did is I told Danny, I said, you know, there was a famous mathematician and physicist at the time of Einstein, and this man's name was Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr. Now, Niels Bohr was quite a genius, and there's some debate on whether Einstein maybe borrowed some of the thinking of Niels Bohr and who should have gotten credit for the great breakthrough. Now, Niels Bohr, though, dis Einstein disagreed with Niels Bohr on this. Niels Bohr said, any great thinker can embrace two opposite sides of any argument. Einstein did not agree, um, because that's what you would call a violation philosophy of the law of non-contradiction. The law of non-contradiction, going all the way back to Aristotle, 400 years before Christ, the law of non-contradiction, which is a law of logic, which is in philosophy, says a thing cannot be, a thing cannot exist, and exist at the same time and in the same relationship. I'm not going to do too much of this. But Niels Bohr was embracing two polar opposite views, he said, and he said, you could do that, and it makes you intellectual. Einstein okay. did not agree and said, he used a famous quote, Einstein, God does not roll dice. Listen. Yes, go ahead. Dear, yes. I can see right now that you go off. I know. Off and deep. off. Here's the thing. Yes. I want, I want to put you on the video. I know. The kingdom of heaven is within. That is right. And it's within everybody. It's within Gary the K. And it's within Bob. And it's within everybody. I was so important. this is love. It's all about love. Yes. And even Jesus preached love. Yes. So you can't exclude people there. Love is is the kingdom of God is within. Correct. That's right. I, you're God and you're sitting on a cloud and you see this little fella, Gary the K, who's been good all his life. He's a good little boy. You're gonna love him. Of course. Right? Yeah. And Bob yeah, and that, Danny and all yeah, of them. If only. If, all, if see, only that would prove but it doesn't work that way. Well, how does it work, dear? I like Unfortunately, <laughs> the problem is people do not want to compromise. It's their view or nobody's yes. view. Now, this is this is what I'm going to correct. And the problem is your view could be too narrow-minded. The other guys could be too liberal. That's right. And I you agree. have to have a compromise. And when you compromise, you will get much further ahead of the game with than holding out and holding out and holding out, and then you end up with nothing. Yes. And this is the problem with people today. This is one of the reasons why we have all these problems. Yes. Another problem we have is that we try to get into everybody else's business. That's what he yes. said earlier. Yes. You cannot... What, when we went, this this weapons of mass destruction oh, by the previous just, president... Yeah. We were talking, now, and there was nothing there. Now, all we did, they didn't want us there. 
we traded a dictatorship for a civil war. And what did people think they were going to get? We're going to we're going to get him out, and we're going to bring in this puppet, and he'll do whatever we want. And the people will say, "Yes, we appreciate what you've done for us." <laughs> Unfortunately, the world <laughs> does not work that way. If only it did. See? Let me say, Gary, Marie asked me somewhat. I took the exact same view that Gary just took when me, when me and Marie were discussing our involvement, and I tried to explain. I tried to say, I think one of the, she asked, what do you think the solution is in Syria, John? What do you, I said, I said that many Muslims that were not radical, who turned radical, Many of them had grievances against the West that were legitimate grievances, which were the involvement politically of the United States propping up certain monarchies, like in Saudi Arabia and other countries. Now, the average Muslim throughout all those years had grievances, and the grievances were primarily your involvement, Western world, United States, with uh, propping up monarchies, whether Saudi Arabia, whether Mubarak in Egypt or whatever, your, your alliances with leaders in all part of the world and your involvement in all part of the world, that's our main grievance. The radicalized Muslim got to a point where they began to justify violent intervention in order to stop us. It, it led to that. And I'm not justifying what the radicals did, but what I tried to say is, we in the United States or in the Western world, we need to understand it's not that they're all out just to kill us because they don't like our way of life. They feel that our involvement over a very long period of time has led them to this point. I'm not justifying what they're doing. I'm saying it's, it would benefit us if we understood in a way that some of the arguments they have were legitimate arguments. Can everybody love everybody? But now, I like what Gary said, because I took much yeah, of Gary's yeah, view. Yeah. And I've known Gary for a while, for a and, and he'll tell you I'm not the type that preaches at any of the guys, when I'm talking to Bob or Gary, or, right. but when you have open conversation like this, you, you, you appreciate other people's views. Well, can we? Yes. All love each other? Yes. And, and That's what I want. That's what I want. Love you know, and peace. I, I want that. Look, you quoted, I've been teaching, you don't know the videos I've been teaching, I quoted, you know, they asked Jesus, what is the great commandment? He said, to, to love the Lord your God you. with all your heart, soul, mind, and might, and to love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two hang over on the prophets. Do you know where that comes from? I'm reading the Old Testament and the New Testament throughout every... That comes from Moses in Deuteronomy. I finished Exodus and Deuteronomy, so it's in either an Exodus. So, from the Jewish holy book, which Christians also embrace... The Talmud? Uh, where you have the... Very good. The but, Talmud? Well, you have the Talmud, but you have the uh, uh, the Pentateuch. We refer to in Christianity was the first five books of the law, Penta, Pentateuch, and it's uh, referred to as the. Uh, That's right. The Talmud is <laughs> more of the traditional thing, and the first five books are uh, in the Jewish. I'm forgetting the term it right now. Torah, the Torah. Torah. Oh, okay. The Torah. The Old Testament, first five books of the law, are the Torah, referred to in Judaism, Christianity refers to as the Pentateuch, but either way, Jesus quoted Moses, and and when he said that was, see, so he was not, uh, he was quoting the Old Testament. The whole thing's supposed to be about love. Yes. And that's the whole key to this whole and mess in the whole world, it's love and peace. And the other verse you quoted was the, king, the kingdom of God is within It's within, you. yes. Yes. Jesus himself. You know, Marie asked me, John, are you the type that's, you guys know, but she don't. Are you the type that's like one of those prophecy doomed to day type <laughs> I said, Marie, I said, I teach historic Christianity, and so I'm not into that doomsday prophecy type stuff. But then she asked me, what do you see as the future going on right now globally and economically and all? And I said, I'll be honest with not you. Good. I said, just from re just from a media watcher, as you know, I'm a news person. I said, I see it in very destabilizing, and I said, I see it much more destabilized than it's been in many, many years because of Russia, China, and a lot of things going on. I said, so though I'm not a doomsday prophecy type teacher, I said, just from looking at the global picture the last few years, I said, I do not see a really great horizon because China just 
Uh, uh, yes, Gary, tell me. With, with China, you knew they were overgrown. Yes. Everything is overgrown. That's what I've been saying. What they you have to have now is China has to do with, rather than relying on exports for most, they're going to have to develop their businesses internally, and they're not doing that. Um, as far as the currency, that will eventually stabilize. It's going to take time. When we raised our interest rates in the U.S., people should not have been surprised why people were selling in the stock market. This time of the year, they want to sell their losers to write off against their income. Yeah. They had a good year. So you have to expect that. Yeah. Then you have other economies that will take time. It just doesn't happen overnight. The problem with today's society, they want instant gratification. The instant gratification is not there. Yes. No matter what you want, anything you ever wanted, in any goals or this or that, it took time to achieve. You didn't just do it, you wanted it, you made it today and then you want it tomorrow to achieve it. It doesn't work that way. Yes. If only it did. That's a great phrase, if only. But John, I think greed is, is responsible for a lot of the world's problems. Yeah. Greed. I agree. Yeah. Greed in all its forms. No. It's I agree. Greed has to go. I agree. Love it's never, has to come up. It's, you know, another thing with people, it's never enough. That's what I'm saying. It's always, greed. I gotta have this. I gotta have I gotta more. Have that. And it's all right to buy on credit when the bill comes due. You pay it in full. Yeah. What people are looking, what the credit card companies do, is they have the rewards program. Okay, I have credit cards rewards, and it's great when you get the 2% or 3% cash back. However, if you're paying it over time, they're well willing to give you the 2 or 3% or even 1% uh, if they're getting 13 and 14% interest. So they're willing to do that. People don't read the fine print. Yes. And the point is, you know, you don't get it's greedy. It's the stock market. It's greedy. It's, I, they're, they're looking for this big hit. That's true. And then the problem with people is, is that they have money in the market they can't afford to lose. So what happens? The market goes down because you, you're dealing, you're competing with professional traders, the big institutions. Yes. They have programs sell. So everybody runs, and these same people that can't afford it, that, that, that the stock goes down, it's their own money for everyday living expenses, so they head for the exits, they take a bath, yes. and this is what happens, but the bill still becomes due, and this is your problem. Gary, Gary's, uh, you see how uh, Gary would, a lot of my stuff would be like Gary. Gary, I mentioned the other day how you had those junk bond funds, two of them that closed down in New York. But they weren't real big. I think one was seven hundred million, the other. But what do you, what do you think? Some some of the uh, well, when, investors couldn't get their money out. Well, they couldn't get their money out. They, you have to sign contracts. When you're dealing with those funds, they can buy on margin. And if they hit the wrong investment, they, that's it. And they were getting called and getting called and getting called. And a lot of these, the, what, the way the hedge funds go, they get paid not only going in, but they get paid 20% of the profits. So as a result, your, these hedge fund managers are going to take big risks because their investors want big risks. Correct. They're not going to be interested with 8, 9, and 10%. They're looking 50 and 60%. So they, they were invested in... in Corporations or investments that were indebted, but they were they were very high risk. Yeah, junk junk bonds. That's what they call them. Not junk not bonds. not regular corporate. I have a high yield fund, but it's covered over a lot of different areas. Yes. With these funds, you want that type of return. They don't do as much. They do they put more money into those high, extremely high risk funds. Yeah. And they can go belly up too. I mean, uh, it's it's not always going to work out your way. Yes. And when you sell, they're, they're going to take a bet. They're not going to get the money back. I mentioned a little of that, and Gary, you could say, is very knowledgeable. Oh, he is. On, and I talk now, somewhat. Yes, Marie. I would like to mention the movie yes. I saw the other day. They can hear you. They can't see okay. you. Okay. I would like to mention the movie I saw the other day. It was called The Big Short. 
I didn't see it's it. It's a complete disgrace. It's about the the mortgage industry where people, 8, mil, eight million people lost their homes and 14 million people lost their jobs okay. because all the banks, they were selling all these junk mortgages and all these people across the United States in 2007 I got slaughtered. Now, familiar. is this is a disgrace? Is this a disgrace or what? Yes. You know, let me say, and I don't know if Gary, um, I'm sure he's familiar with it. The 2007-2008 crash, which up until now is considered the worst financial economic thing we went through in, since that time, and we're in almost 2016. Right. They were very singular. up. And I guess that movie's about that. Yes. What, what happened, what, what I think was a little dishonest in that was this. There was pressure on the banks. To start, and it, it had to do with politics, but there was pressure on the banks that said this. See, Gary agreed. The, but they said to the banks, you're not giving enough mortgages to people that are uh, racial minorities, so forth. Low really? Uh, yes. There was pressure in Congress on the banks. So they were really? <laughs> so, correct. So they forced the banks. This is a part of it. I didn't know they that. Yes. They forced the banks to give mortgages to people that normally would have not been, uh, qualified for the mortgage. So they were being good in a way? Well, they were forced to do it. Oh. Because they were looked upon as, well, that. you're, yes, you're being discriminatory in your practices because you have a lot of low income, a lot of minorities who can't afford mortgages. Therefore, and I remember watching on C-SPAN and all that they were berating some of these banks saying, how dare you? Now, here's the funny thing about it. After the banks did a lot of those loans that played a role in the in the crash the same people in congress that forced that would then ride on the high horse saying how dare you have done these oh, things oh boy what a bunch so, of hypocrites <laughs> however there's another thing what that you don't have that you have to realize common sense somebody that has a fifty thousand dollar income that puts nothing down or one or two percent down on a mortgage on a five hundred thousand dollar home, these banks knew they were not going to be able to well, make they knew it. Yes. They and knew that was and that anybody was there. with common sense, and so they would repos take the house and then sell it. They would get their money back. Yes. Don't don't kid yourself. You were getting yes. such bargains. So they're they're partially to blame also. And also these these packages were bundled together, yes. which were high risky CBOs. mortgages. Right. And when these CMOs. were bundled and they were uh, Gary would know. Well when they were put together, they were in a sense that I don't know if they referred to Miss Junk Bonds, but I'm saying it was almost the same thing. But they weren't informing the investors that they were but having such that risky CMO yeah. Okay. See, Gary knows the term. I did not as, know. The term. Uh, as, a, as a result, your market fell. Yeah. Now, here's the thing: all these people that had their money in that couldn't afford to lose it, you know, like everyday living expenses, their kids' education, or a major capital purchase, they immediately had a pretty exit and, and lost everything. Well, quite a bit. Now, the people that stayed in and waited for it. What they did was they bought up, the stock market was so low, the stocks, I bought shares in it. I didn't sell anything. I just bought, and you had the big institutions were buying up. It took a few years to get back to where it was, but it got back to where it was, and more, a lot more. Yes, I thought and it, it was I thought like, yeah, but people who lost their like, homes weren't in a position now, to buy anything. Now, 82% lost money, 18% made. I was one of the 18% that made, but I sat there and didn't, didn't uh, take anything out. And that was the whole key. I knew it would come back, yeah. and I didn't sell anything, even the funds, nothing. Yeah. And that's how you work it. But you're competing against big investors, yes. and these people thought they were going to make a killing. Yeah. And no good. You have to invest the long term. You can't, for the average investor, going for the quick profit, it doesn't work for most yeah. people. Yeah. Did you meet it just Ernie? doesn't. Did you meet Ernie yesterday? 
I know Ernie, but I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, Ernie so. lost two hundred and forty thousand dollars by the Bernie off, Murdoch yeah. Murdoch. One hundred thousand. Not, not our Ernie. Yes, our have. Ernie. He said that was his life serving. He worked all his life, and two hundred and forty thousand or four hundred and twenty thousand. It's all gone because of this Murdoch. Yes. They, look, there were a lot of in, in made, the, off. made off. Made there off. Were, there were a lot. There, there were more that played in the role of the 2007-2008 crash, but a big part was what we were discussing on those risky mortgages that were packaged and then they were sold to investors yeah. that were not knowledgeable that right. they were buying these risks. So the banks, uh, their part, and it was not informing that these were so high risk, yes. but also the Congress themselves, I think it was, I don't know if it was Dodd. Chris Dodd, but there was a few in Congress at that time who are not there anymore that were pressure yeah, for the Dodd. banks. Dodd was one of them, the yeah. other was Bonnie Frank. Yeah, Dodd Frank, I was going to say, and they're both gone. I mean, they're both not in Congress anymore. So the pressure was, if I remember right, and then Dodd came under criticism because after he was criticizing all this, his mortgage company gave him a sweetheart deal because he knew them. Oh no, it's on other. This is the camera this way. Oh, I made a mistake, Marie, you're on the whole time. I, I do this a lot. Okay. Any give me a last word, Gary, because you I go thirty minutes and the, about. the things are gonna improve, but it's gonna take time. The problem with this economy is it's going basically to the top one percent and the, and big business. This, this is your problem with the economy today. You know what's interesting? You all watching the video know this. When I went to New York City two days ago and did that whole tour, St. Patrick's and all, I saw the, I interviewed my first homeless friend from the streets of Rome. New York, Jerome. Jerome was an older black man that you saw in video. He was so articulate, so smart, and those that watched the video with Gary and Marie did not say, Jerome was a cosmetologist at one point and made tons of money. Wow. He does not suffer from alcohol or drug problems. He explained this whole thing, but he said, you know, John, he said, the problem in this country is the extreme capitalism and the extreme poverty. He said, and I quoted a verse, you all saw it, but it's from Proverbs, which Old Testament, Gary and Chris, all, Christians and Jews uh, agree in the Old Testament, and it's from Proverbs, and it says, two things I ask of God. Give me neither poverty or riches, meaning extreme wealth, lest I forget God. But if I have extreme poverty, I will also curse God. And and Jerome, my homeless friend, agreed. He said, John, that's what he was talking about. A homeless guy on the streets of New York was saying, we don't have balance. We don't have balance. He said, if you go to extremes, that was interesting to hear from a homeless friend. And Gary's yes. advice is kind of the same. That I met a lady yes. right outside of St. Patrick's, a homeless lady. Yeah. Uh, and she had a rosy cheeks and she was sitting on the ground and I was feeling sorry for her. And she said, don't feel sorry for me, honey. I don't have to work nine to five. I'm free. Mm. That's what she told me. That was well, advice. I, even the people that are working today are not happy. Yeah. Unless with companies today, unless you're top of management or they have plans to move you. He said 30 seconds. you got to wrap it up. No, uh, no. 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, we, we did 30 minutes. Okay. okay. <laughs> to, to wrap it up, things will get better. It's going to take time. And as far as the housing problem, more affordable housing, there's not enough of it. That, that's yes. your problem. Everything is luxury. That the, the foreigners are buying up. So hopefully that will turn around. And the world situation, if only the Middle East, but you need the leaders that are willing to do that, work together. We don't have that now. It's interesting because before, um, I've known Gary now for a few years, ever since I've come back. And most of the guys uh, that I see at White Castle, whether they're Jewish background, even atheists. Me and Danny are very good friends, and Danny's the atheist in the group. Most of them know that I'm very not, you know, I don't really preach at the guys. Correct. I just have conversations. And if people want to learn, and Danny's very, he listens. Danny's a card. He listens to a lot of the stuff. He does. And so that's how you kind of interact with people. But today, you got you saw how Gary's perspective was, which I was familiar with. Gary's very knowledgeable on these issues. And so when Marie, who I've not met before, uh, came in, she wondered if I was the type that's very bushy and all. And so, but Gary would have 
been able to say, no, John's not. You know, but Gary, you get good financial advice, and a lot of times that's what I when I talk to Gary. A lot of times that's what we talk about. I was gr glad today I would have not had any of my other friends to talk to, and I wouldn't do video like this every day. So I think it was ordained that we were supposed to run I into think it because it it I it didn't was, know where I was, was going. Fate. Yes, right, Gary, that we came here today, yeah. and we saw John again because I was I was telling him I was so happy to meet you, and now I got to meet you again. So I, I can't I, put you on. I would have put no. you on video, but I'm not going to put Marie on. God bless you, everybody. I'm going to shut it, and I'm going to still John. talk to my friends.